you ever get the sense that you might not be entirely expressing yourself? You see, there is a world of powerful and pervasive conversations going on, but you might not be fully participating in it. I am talking about the world of visual communications, the notion that ideas and messages when placed in a visual context can resonate with an audience to a greater extent than language alone. Images are known for the incredible heavy lifting they do when articulating nuanced emotional content. As viewers, we can pick up on mountains of information with the simple use of imagery. So to illustrate my point, I've written here a simple verbal greeting. But I do not have my PowerPoint clicker, so I will get that. Thank you. All right. A simple verbal greeting. Hello there. Now, this communicates my sentiment effectively enough. But if we tweak the visual devices at play, my message can take on a more ominous tone. <laughs> Likewise, when we look at color, particularly value and saturation, we can further manipulate a message. So this blue and orange layout appears frilly and swoon-worthy, while this blue and orange layout appears bold and industrial. I'm changing the form of my letters but I'm also tweaking the lightness, darkness, and vibrancy of my blues and oranges. Scale can further play a part in manipulating a message, making it whisper or scream. All of this emotion communicated without changing any copy. Our eyes are trained to pick up on tonal differences in line, shape, and color. It is how we organize information and make visual connections in this world. Context can further play a part in helping to elevate a message. And to talk about context, I would like to tell you about some amazing refrigerators. You see, these refrigerators lived in New Orleans, Louisiana, as did I after Hurricane Katrina. One of the many problems that faced the area after the storm's devastation was that thousands of refrigerators had to be thrown out. You see, most people evacuated in quite a hurry and few anticipated the events that followed the storm. So refrigerators were left in homes without power, stocked full of perishable goods for months in the heat. The city became a graveyard for these toxic, smelly, maggot-ridden boxes as people duct taped their refrigerators closed and threw them out on the curb. When no one came to pick up the discarded fridges, people began writing messages on them creating an unlikely and remarkably poignant canvas for their personal hopes and frustrations. Some of the messages were humorous, like free gumbo inside or my tummy hurts. Others were heartbreaking, like this, a posting for a missing person, or this, asking someone or perhaps everyone to come home. All of these acts were cathartic, and the context of the messages helped to communicate a loss, a devastation, and a confusion that was nearly impossible to process at the time. The Katrina refrigerators became an icon of the storm experience and a testament to the humor, passion, and resilience of the people living through its aftermath. This was an example of folks having something to say and a compelling visual vehicle for their messages. Using only the tools they had at their hands, entire communities were able to transform their front yards into landscapes ripe with conversation. This is the power that visuals can have. This exemplifies that fearlessly communicating and expressing yourself in a way that can be seen can help to articulate those more mysterious things about you, your experience, and your perspective. Now, I've been in a position to teach visual creativity in one way or another throughout my professional life, and one thing continues to emerge. Everyone I have ever encountered has the capacity to communicate through a visual medium. In other words, everyone has a visual voice, but not everyone necessarily believes in this voice. When it comes to visual communication, many people think that it's best left to the pros or that it's not for me. But I had a choral instructor once who had the mantra, everyone with a voice can sing. 
Now what she meant here was not that we would all become opera singers or go off breaking wine glasses with perfect pitch. What she meant was that everyone with a voice was eligible to use that voice and participate in the joy that comes from using that voice for melodic purposes. The designation of good singer versus bad singer only serves to hold us back and limit the use of our voice. And I'm finding the same to be true with visual articulation. You see, it is said in design books that we live in a visual world. And this is not just because we are savvy consumers of graphics and advertisements, but in many ways, we are designing every single day. We design our clothes, for instance, our outfits. So think about the clothes you're wearing this very minute. Every adjustment and alteration and combination that you have to the outfit on your body, those are acts of design. We are constantly manipulating our personal spaces to reflect our visual preferences. We even curate the objects and images that live on our desks at work or at school. All of these choices make us art directors of our own lives, proving that we are surprisingly adept at communicating visually. Yet the misperception exists that in order to articulate yourself with images, you must have some degree or accreditation. We ignore the fact that in the mere way that we present ourselves to the world, we are communicating visually. And when people limit the way that they express themselves in a mode that could be seen, what we are left with is a landscape of sleek professional images that tend to be void of nuance and uniqueness. But what wonderful conversations could we have if we all became more active participants in a public visual expression? We can become more active, and some already are. All around us, street artists and guerrilla communicators are utilizing public spaces to spread their messages. Some are critiquing social issues. Others are commenting on advertising culture. More still are expressing their beliefs and ideals. All of these people are utilizing public landscapes to be in conversation with the world. There is an art and a beauty in this mode of public visual expression, in the honesty it embodies, and in the attention it demands. Plus, it is an arena that requires very little training from its participants. It requires a mind, a message, and an environment to transform. Public visual expression does not even need to be particularly fringe or destructive. I've seen beautiful examples of artistic expression plastered onto people's bicycles and cars. Some enjoy costuming as a means of self-expression, commentary, protest, or good old-fashioned attention getting. Others are finding ways to communicate their messages temporarily yet publicly. A growing movement of eco-street artists are working with impermanent and environmentally friendly materials like mud to communicate their messages on buildings and sidewalks. Here, artist Jesse Graves is shown painting over a stencil he created with found dirt and red clay instead of using spray paint. Other materials that can be used to transform a landscape are seeds, yarn, found objects, or chalk. All of these are safe, temporary, and effective. We need more conversations in this life. And visual devices are far too powerful to be exclusively reserved for the experts. I would like to see more people taking agency over their ability to communicate visually, rather than relying on agencies to dominate our public spaces. I can envision a world of visual communication that is not limited to those who talk versus those who consume, but is a conversation, a back and forth. If you have something to say, Take the tools you have at your hand and express yourself in a way that physically alters the world we gloss over every day. One of my graduate school mentors, a talented graphic designer and inspiring professor by the name of Robert Sedlak, likes to talk of his favorite definition for design, which is taking an existing situation and making it a preferred situation. Well, I see a public landscape in which all voices can be expressed as a highly preferred situation one ripe with creativity and innovation. And who wouldn't want to participate in that? Thank you.